My name is uh, Rob Kreps. I'm an Associate Athletic Director here at the University of Alberta. Um, responsible for uh, a whole range of uh, programming, uh, including development programming, and probably the strongest personal emphasis that I have uh, in programming right now is um, related to our academies. And um, this is one I think that's uh, pretty cool and pretty near and dear to my heart, and I want to make sure that we get a chance to chat with you guys about it tonight. Um, so before I get into the presentation, I just want to introduce uh, a few people here. Uh, so over on the far left there is Michael Cook. He's our uh, head sport conditioning coach here at the University of Alberta. Uh, he's also the uh, Edmonton area uh, manager for uh, the Alberta Sport Development Center. Um, next to him is Pete Houlihan. Pete is uh, uh, a coach within our, uh, our rugby training group in the uh, Green and Gold Athlete Academy, specifically focusing in uh, on the boys, but uh, the boys and the girls do kind of work closely together. Um, so Mick Lismore. Mick is, um, he's our associate coach for mental training and he also is involved in the curling academy, which is my sport. I'm the head curling coach here at U of A as well. Uh, so he has quite an involvement uh, on the mental training side within the, uh, the Athlete Academy. Uh, Matt Parrish, he's our head coach for Pandas Rugby here at U of A, and he also works with me in the Green and Gold Sports System um, in a variety of areas, uh, programming and coaching uh, in particular. And this is Chelsea Ross, who you might know. Chelsea uh, is sort of uh, really the person who runs the Green and Gold Athlete Academy, even though I sometimes say I do. Um, so she oversees that whole academy side of our programming and does the, uh, the nitty gritty work with that as well as coaching the, uh, the female or the girls rugby training group. So um, I think you might also be aware that uh, Chelsea's a, a member of Team Canada, uh, played in the World Cup of, of rugby, so we're pretty lucky to have her and um, I hope you guys would feel the same way. So what we're going to do tonight is uh, keep this a little bit less uh, formal because we've got a small group and we'll give, it, give you guys a chance to answer any questions that you, uh, that you might have. One thing that I, I do want to say is uh, you might notice these guys here with the cameras. Um, so they are uh, just, just recording this because there's a number of people who can't make it specifically on the nights of these open houses and so this particular presentation is one that... Uh, uh, that they're going to cover. Well, there, there are some other things that we will talk about that maybe aren't uh, uh, necessarily generic to all the different types of, uh, of athletes that would be in our academies. So we'll kind of talk about that a little bit more. So we good with that? All right, so this will take about 15 or 20 minutes. I'll kind of walk you through the, uh, the basics of the Green and Gold Athlete Academy. And then from there, um, what we're going to do is um, kind of uh, open it up to Matt a little bit more to talk about uh, the rugby side of things and let you guys, uh, you know, ask any questions that, uh, that you might have. Is that cool? All right. So we'll get going here. All right. So we're going to start out just talking generally about the Green and Gold Athlete Academy. Um, so really, if, there, if there's a simple thing that captures what we do, um, it exists to provide a high quality daily training environment within the framework of the school day. Okay, so beyond supporting your uh, athletic pursuits, which are obviously an important thing to you, we're also really interested in helping you guys find uh, both academic success and life balance. So to illustrate this, what I want to do is kind of give you a little bit of an example of what happens with you guys today. Okay, and you're not alone. This happens with, um, you know, young developing athletes who have lots of things in their lives. So you... Uh, get up early and you go to school, might even have some breakfast before you leave. You do a whole day of school, you get out of school, you race over to the place that you're going to do your training. You do that training and then they say, well, you're here, so we'll maybe get you to do some lifting and maybe we'll do some kind of a classroom session. So then you get home at uh, 7 or 7.30 at night. You haven't had any time to eat dinner yet, let alone do any homework, right? Not to mention no time for family or friends or to have a life. And then you repeat the same thing the next day. Sound familiar? That's what happens. So this thing provides an alternative to that. We want to make sure that we find a way uh, to help you uh, have some balance in your lives, to get some academic credit for things that are more than appropriate for you to get the credit for, um, and of course to do really well in your sport. Okay. 
So we have a, a very selective admission policy uh, for the Green and Gold Athlete Academy, and that's very much on purpose. We didn't want to have a, you know, a public academy where everybody who wanted to could come in regardless of their ability. So one of the things that's really important to us is that you need to have realistic potential to compete at the post-secondary level and perhaps beyond one day. If we don't think that uh, you have that potential, as much as we like you and as, much, as glad as we are that you came tonight, we're not going to admit you. We're just not going to do that. Because we're, we're not doing right by you and we're not doing right by the others who are, who are in the academy. Okay? So what this does is it makes it possible for us to deliver more advanced training. And that could be technical, tactical, physical, mental, social, or anything like that. So if you're with a group of more advanced kids, um, we don't have to do anything other than to move forward in a way that helps everybody get better and to do it faster, okay? So related to this, and this is why it's not so bad that we have a, a small group with us here tonight, we're only really interested in small training groups. So we're, we're really committed to that because we know it makes it possible for us to work more closely with each student athlete, okay? So right now we've got training groups in curling and rugby. So really there's three. There's a, a curling training group, um, there's a boys rugby training group and a girls rugby training group, okay? Those two kind of work closely together, but in a lot of ways all three of these training groups work together depending on um, the particular focus of the, of the session at that point in time. So we're also going to be adding a Pandas hockey training group next year, so we're really excited about that. Um, it won't be like any other hockey academy in the city though. Again, it's a selective admission policy and it's just going to be 20 or 25 uh, hockey players and that's it. So on to the next one, Charles. Okay. So what we start out with is that there's 12 hours of weekly programming. All right? 12 hours. So that's uh, from Monday to Thursday from 1 to 4 p.m. Okay? So that training is divided into three different categories. Right? So there's sports-specific training, there's general athletic training, and then there's academic content. Because we said that we want to make sure that we help you take care of the academic side of what you do, and there are certain things that you absolutely should be getting credit for, okay? So that's why we have to make sure that we, we cover off that academic content and make sure that, um, you know, you're earning those grades that you get. So we're going to talk about each of these. We'll start out with the, with the six hours of sports-specific training. So this equates to uh, an hour and a half a day, 90 minutes, 1.5 hours of sports-specific training each day from Monday to Thursday. And, and there, what we try to do is to deliver a comprehensive uh, technical and tactical curriculum in the sport. In your guys' case, because you're all rugby players, rugby. Okay? So that curriculum um, is developed by our varsity head coach. So Matt, back there, developed the sport-specific curriculum. Um, he taught me lots about rugby as we were going through that process. Um, and it's delivered by our academy and or assistant coaches, so Pete and Chelsea and potentially some others. So typically these coaches are assistant coaches on the varsity team, as Mick is in curling, but tend to focus in as well on uh, that high school aged academy um, future bearer panda, okay? Now there's also three hours of general athletic training. So that equates to two 90 minute or 1.5 hour sessions over the course of the week. So those things uh, will include sport conditioning for sure, so that's working out in the gym, elements of strength and, and um, other aspects of fitness. Um, but it also includes some multi-sport that we build into that. Part of that is to make sure that, that you get all the necessary credit for phys ed, but part of that is because we really believe in you mixing it up a little bit and doing some cross training and getting involved in some other sports, even if it's just to uh, stretch your horizons a little bit and make your bodies do something a little bit different than they usually do on other days. And then there's mental training. So this is kind of where Mick comes in. And, and what we try to do is embed that mental training um, right into both the, uh, the, the physical kind of sides of training. So the sport conditioning and the multi-sport. So it's kind of unique. It's, a, it's an approach that's, I think, quite innovative in that uh, you're not going to sit in a classroom necessarily and get a PowerPoint and that's how you're going to learn all aspects of mental training. Some of that happens as part of the academic content. But Mick will be right in there uh, in the gym with you as you guys are are lifting and working out. 
and trying to help you overcome some of the challenges and in the adversity that you might face in there and in the process maybe uh, teaching you some mental lessons that will help you in your sport itself. Okay? And finally, three hours of academic content. So that comes in the form of two 90-minute classroom sessions. They happen right here in this classroom, right? What happens there is that, uh, that we deliver a couple of things. One of them is, uh, well, they're all related to, uh, to CTS. So that's uh, Career and Technology Studies, okay? And specifically what you're gonna do is you're gonna learn uh, about different professions in our field uh, related to our faculty of kinesiology, sport, and recreation. So it could be as a coach, or it could be as a teacher, it could be as a physiotherapist, or a trainer, or any number of areas like that, okay? The other side of it is that you get five credits for phys ed, okay? So phys ed, uh, five credits, 10 credits for career and technology studies. So when you put those two things together, uh, you end up with 15 annual credits. So for the, the parents in the room, you might know that, that your kids need 100 credits to graduate from high school. So over the course of three years, you get 45% of that uh, for being in the academy, which is pretty good. But it's not easy. <laughs> Let's be clear about that, okay? All right, so we're really proud to partner with, with Vimy Ridge Academy. So for those of you who, who don't know, uh, Vimy Ridge is uh, the official uh, academy school for, for Edmonton Public School Board. And so um, they specialize in the unique needs and schedules of student athletes. So normally what happens uh, right after I'm finished this slide is uh, uh, the assistant principal at Vimy Ridge, Daryl Weinberger, makes a big speech. He's actually coaching his, his basketball team right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna send you guys a, 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 a video that kind of explains some of the things that uh, that are important about Vimy, but I'm gonna hit the highlights a little bit. So one of those is, how many of you are gonna be going into grade 10 next year? Hands up. Okay, one there, two, okay. So you guys, to, to make this whole thing work, really don't have much of an option but to, but to go to Vimy Ridge. So the reason for that is because uh, they are the only school in Edmonton Public School Board that teaches uh, three academic courses in the morning. So by the time you leave at lunch, you've got all the, the academic credits that you need other than the ones that you get here um, in the Athlete Academy, okay? So you take all your core academic courses, everything that needs to happen from math to science to social, whatever, all those things that you're gonna need to be able to uh, you know, move on to post-secondary uh, later on. Uh, if you are uh, not going into grade 10 and, are, and are instead are going into grade 11 or 12, uh, Edmonton Public School Board has, has given you guys the option to stay at your current school. Now I will say that's not necessarily the best thing to do. I know you got a great school and we got lots of friends there. I know the teachers are great. I know that's fantastic. But it's going to be really difficult for you to get all the academic credits that you need without doing correspondence training, so online education. Simply because the way that school, your school day works, you won't be able to get those three classes in the morning. You'll only get two. Okay, so I'm not saying that's bad and, and you, you might be able to make it work, but we just have to make sure that you're gonna graduate on time and, um, and that you do well, okay? So why is that important to us? Well, first of all, the University of Alberta is a, a public institution and we care about education and we want you guys to just do well in life, right? That's true, you know something else that's true? You might be future pandas, and if you're future pandas, the only way that's not going to work is if you can't meet the admission requirements to get into the University of Alberta. So it's pretty important to us to make sure that, that for all the right reasons, that you guys get the, the marks that you need uh, in order to get admitted uh, to one of the top universities in Canada, which is what the University of Alberta is. So um, I, I don't have any shares in Vimy Ridge. I don't. They're, they're really good people, They've, they're wonderful to work with, um, but I can just tell you that even if you're going into grade 11 or grade 12, you should give some strong consideration to, uh, to transferring over there. I'm not saying you have to, I'm just saying it's a good idea because their, their school is set up uh, specifically for this type of a purpose, okay? 
The other thing I'll mention, which is just a nice little um, side benefit, they just did a $40 million renovation to the school. There's a whole bunch of schools out there that didn't cost $40, $40 million to build. So uh, Chelsea and I have spent a fair bit of time there. It's absolutely beautiful and uh, just outstanding facilities, okay? So I think that covers that presentation.